Hello again, it's Laura Davalo here with a fun interactive card featuring stamps from Birdie Brown's super cute birthday bud stamp set. When we pull on the pull tab, the critters with the red balloons simultaneously move in opposite directions. I of course used the interactive up and down dynamics for the mechanism, but hid the grooves a little bit to maintain an element of surprise. Okay, let's get right to it and start with the background. Here I'm inking a piece of smooth white cardstock with some blue raspberry premium dye ink and the mini cloud edges stencil. I'm using an ink blending brush and a very light touch to avoid harsh lines. When we're done, we can grab the large rectangular die from the interactive up and down dynamic set to cut our panel. The vertical grooves need to be on the upper edge of the panel, so be sure to adhere the die correctly to the cloud background before running it through your die cutting machine. Okay, please pay close attention to the next step. Let's grab a pencil and a ruler and trace two diagonal lines from each of the grooves. Where they meet, we need to punch a hole for our mechanism. To make this tutorial as short as possible, I've already stamped, die cut and colored the images. I wanted to use the happy birthday to you sentiment, but wasn't sure that it would fit. So I'm laying out all of the elements to make sure that it does. By the way, the little bird is from the BB Sunflower Sweetheart set. After marking the panel with a pencil, I stamped the sentiment off camera with extreme black hybrid ink. I also die cut all of the elements from the interactive up and down dynamics out of smooth white cardstock. Some of them need two layers to be sturdy enough. We can stack them with some matte liquid glue. I'm doing the same with the critters since those balloon strings are quite delicate. Okay, next we have to prepare a few of the elements. I like to use a nail file to make the surface of those spin and slide discs a little rougher so that they can be perfectly adhered either with liquid glue or double-sided tape. We also need to fold those four little rectangles in half so that we can assemble the mechanism. It's really easy to do since they have that embossed line exactly in the middle. Now on to the trickiest part of this card, especially if you have big fat fingers like I do. We need to insert two of the folded pieces in the slit and adhere them together with a piece of double-sided tape. Okay, I finally managed to do it. It's important to cut off any excess tape so that our critters can slide up and down those slits without getting stuck. And before moving on to the next one, just make sure that it works. My camera had a hard time zooming in and out, so let's repeat the process with the second slit so that you don't have any doubts about the assembly. We insert the pieces, sort of wrapping them around the edges of the slit or groove, and then we adhere them together with the tape. Once again, getting rid of the excess and checking the movement. Now we can flip the panel and attach two of the die cut circles to the back of these pieces. You can either use double sided tape or liquid glue, always making sure not to get any of the glue on the slits. Next, let's grab two of the spin and slide discs and a strong liquid adhesive to adhere them to the center of the circles. I marked them with a pen so that you can see them better on your screens. By the way, did you notice that the pull tab for this mechanism has a tiny embossed circle on it? We need to adhere the third spin and slide disc to it before moving on. And if you use too much glue, just scrape it off before it dries. I edited out the clip where I inserted a little brad in the center of the panel, so please imagine that I just did that. Now let's link the T-shaped piece to that brad in such a way that the circular sliding pieces end up inside the horizontal grooves. It's actually easier to do than to explain. 
To avoid tightening the prongs too much, just use the pull tab to add some extra space. There we go. So that the T-shape can function properly, we need to carefully adhere circles to all three spin and slide discs. The lower edge of the T is first linked to the pull tab, like so. There's a die for cutting a sleeve or collar piece included in the interactive up and down dynamics that we will use to stabilize the pull tab. Just fold it using the embossed lines, wrap it around the pull tab and add some adhesive. We will attach it to the back of the panel in a moment. But first we need to adjust the length of the pull tab. The best way to do this is to temporarily adhere it to the panel with a piece of tape so that it doesn't move. Then we can grab some double-sided foam tape and add a stop to the back of the panel so that it can't be pushed too far in. Now we can attach the before-mentioned sleeve to hold the pull tab in place. We will leave a little bit of room on the lower edge of the card so that we can add a strip of foam to it. This strip will also stop the pull tab from moving vertically too much, which could happen due to the nature of the mechanism. If needed, we can snip off the corners of the T with a pair of sharp scissors. It's also a good idea to grab a pencil to trace the movement of the mechanism so that we can add more foam tape without interfering with it. Okay, so this is how much or how little foam tape I added. I guess there isn't a whole lot of extra room on an A2 panel. Before adding our critters, let's see if everything is working as it should. Okay, this is looking great. Since our critters are nice and sturdy thanks to the extra die cut layer, we can have the sheep sliding off the card with no problem. If you prefer that it doesn't, you can move it a quarter of an inch downwards. I just wanted to add the stack of presents to hide the right slit all the way. Unfortunately, it's impossible to do the same with the bunny and the left slit is revealed when pulling the tab. It's still a fun card, although I felt that it was missing a little something. Some clear drops did the trick for me. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Remember to check the description box for all of the details like measurements and list of MFT supplies. Thank you so much for watching. Hasta la próxima!